Welcome to Stock Talk, the new Stockhouse podcast series that brings you behind the scenes insights into trending topics from capital markets, influencers, and entrepreneurs broadcasting from the heart of the financial district in beautiful downtown Vancouver. Welcome to Stock Talk, where we help listeners and investors understand more about investment opportunities in emerging markets. I'm Omri Wallach, and today, we're joined by Michael Collinson, chairman of B Vectoring Technologies, or BVT. BVT is a rapidly growing agritech company behind a radical new farming technology making waves in the media and the market. Instead of using pesticides, B Vectoring relies on bees to transport beneficial microbes, or biologicals, directly to flowers. And the company's biological, CR7, recently won EPA approval in the US. Mr. Collinson has more than 35 years of experience in international manufacturing, marketing, and sales management. From 2012 to 2016, he served as president and CEO of BVT and was responsible for encouraging the company's growth from an R&D initiative to a commercial opportunity. He's joining us on Stock Talk today to discuss BVT's rapidly rising star and where the company is headed next. Thank you very much for joining us, Michael. Thank you very much for inviting me. Pleasure to be here. Anytime. Michael, BVT has been getting a lot of recognition lately since acquiring its first EPA approval. But for your team, this isn't a new story. How much work has gone into the company's proprietary technology? So as you say, this is not a new uh, venture for us. It's been 15 years of research into a unique microbe and probably 10 years working and perfecting a dispensing process using bumblebees and honeybees. Uh, that uh, translates into numerous field trials, extensive patent portfolio, and of course, continuous improvement of our technology. So it's not a it's not a new journey, as you pointed out. It is it's uh, been 15 years of hard work to get here. And since CR7 secured EPA approval in late August, it seems like that story has progressed. BBT was rewarded first with headlines, and more recently with a large contract with a Florida strawberry grower. What has the approval meant for the company? So with an EPA approval, you are finally able to make claims about your biological control. Uh, prior to that, you could not make those claims and you could not sell into the United States. So with that approval, if you like, it gives us the license to hunt now into the United States to get sales. Um, but it is an endorsement from the EPA that this product is safe for humans, safe for the environment, safe for bees. And we've actually spent uh, three years working with the EPA to get this approval will be the first bee vectored product in the United States. As you said, you know, this has been a long time coming. You couldn't claim that it was as beneficial as it is, but you guys knew about it for a while and have kind of been waiting for this to start rolling. Is that right? That would be correct. It's, uh, this is a, a, a feel good story in many, many ways. We deliver a biological, which is a naturally occurring beneficial fungus found indigenously throughout North America, in fact, around the world. And our particular strain is extremely good at assisting and uh, enhancing plant growth while at the same time controlling diseases. So it's, uh, you can't go around saying that until you've proven it and, and until the EPA has approved it. So uh, it's, we've had to remain fairly quiet, but you begin to see us more and more in the news. Even more recently, you've just announced even more positive EPA results with CR7 receiving a residue tolerance exemption could you clarify how that adds to the value proposition of the biological? Yeah, that's a, it's a very important um, endorsement because what it means is as a grower, if you decide to apply a pesticide or a control agent to your crop, you need to do it in such a way or in such a fashion to ensure that there is no residue remaining in the crop when you ship it. And in many instances, that's not the case when you use chemicals. However, if you get a, a residue tolerance exemption, from a grower's perspective, you can apply this product without having to test for any residue. So for an example, if you are an apple grower in Oregon and you were shipping your products to another country and they said you have to test for a residue, by the time you've shipped your product, it may be halfway across the Pacific before you actually know what is in your product. But in our case, you don't actually have to test for that product. The consequence of that is it makes it a much easier decision and a higher adoption rate when you have a product like ours, which is deemed to be safe and with no residue. 
Michael, let's talk a bit about the market because a lot of investors might be learning about bee vectoring, biologicals, and even agriculture for the first time as an investment opportunity. What are some of the biggest factors that you think they should be aware of? So it's a kind of a macro approach to what we're going to discuss here. But in principle, the world is going to have 10 billion people on this planet in the next two decades. And in order to feed those people, literally agriculture has to double its, its uh, production. And it has to do that in the face of increased consumer pressure on chemicals, using less water, less arable land, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's numerous factors affecting that. This is not the first time this has happened in history. Um, the first revolution, of course, was when we started to use um, products like nitrogen, potassium, etc., to enhance our growth. And the second revolution was, if you like, uh, chemical pesticides and GMO. And the current greening revolution is, which has been underway for some 10 to 15 years, is the move away from chemicals to biologicals. And biologicals are uh, where the industry is going. So as you can imagine, food is a $12 trillion business around the world. And pesticides and fertilizers account for a $240 billion market. So this is a substantial market in which we're playing. And we're, we're neatly poised in the new revolution, if you like, to access both the biologicals, but even more importantly, maybe, is our targeted application process, which we do through bees. So if you can imagine, major companies are developing very sophisticated compounds that have to be targeted directly to specific areas of a crop. And here comes a company like BBT, which can deliver these very expensive products in an extremely efficient manner. Makes us very unique. You know, as you said, suffice to say, we're talking about a massive market here. Overall, where do you see BVT currently fit into that large agricultural market? So we access currently a, about a, a $20 billion market, um, which is where the biological market is, is growing currently. And so we have our own biological and we have an application process, which is highly unique. And we're world leaders in that area. So we're accessing a $20 billion market with one product. But our application process will allow us over time to add other, other companies' products to that application process and substantially increase our revenue. So you can imagine each time we add a new product to the delivery process, you can almost double your revenue, depending on the, on the crops you're working with, of course. So a significant potential in this particular area, and biologicals are growing up about 15 to 20% a year. But we're definitely in the right area with the right application process and a biological product. You touched on potentially adding new products and moving forward, you've also stated that the company is positioned with not just new products, but multiple branches of growth. Can you elaborate to investors on these branches? Yes, yeah, certainly. So when you grow a market in the agricultural business, you typically start in one specific or two specific crops. So in our case, we started in blueberries and strawberries and also sunflowers. But you can imagine our product works on all crops. So there's 115 major crops in the world, 87 of which require pollination. So you could expand your business by going into more crops. And then the next aspect of it is then you expand into different countries. So in our case, for example, we've already got our EPA registration now in the United States. We all have, uh, hoping to have our registration in Mexico, which is a substantial market at the end of 2020. We're applying inside Europe, which will be our biggest market, 27 different countries there, and of course, Canada and Latin and South America. So countries, crops, and then you can add more products by different companies. So substantial growth is expected over the next three to four years. Michael, you touched on exploring many different things, including new products and crops. What can you share about what BBT's researchers or partners are currently looking at? So we're currently engaged. We have 15 conversations going on right now with possible partnerships around the world and in different products. Um, we're also looking at three or four in-licensed products, which means we can put them into our own trays and dis distribute them through the B-vectored process. But on top of that, we're also in discussion with companies where we continue with our mission for highly targeted application processes using systems like seed coding, foliar sprays, drones, etc. So all of those that work is in place right now. So Michael, moving forward even further into international markets, how does BVT's successful EPA approval of CR7 factor into further expansion, whether you're looking at the US or international markets? 
Well, the EPA was chosen because it is a gold standard around the world. It is a highly uh, recognized registration process. And once you have it in the United States, other countries tend to look a little bit more favorably on you as you enter into their own registration process. So it, it was a critical milestone for us to get, especially when you consider that this is a brand new application process with a brand new biological. So it, it, it was a major, major milestone. And uh, to accomplish it in the time that we did was, uh, was exceptional. Michael, as we begin to wrap up our interview here, uh, given your position as chairman and considering your vast experience in the industry, where do you see BVT's potential over the longer term? It's, you know, it's an interesting company to watch because uh, BBT has the ability to enable a lot of other companies to bring new products to market, which they currently would not be able to do so. If you use the current methods of application, such as spraying, when 98% of the product ends up in the wrong area, and when your product can cost literally thousands of dollars per acre, you want to make sure that your targeted application is critical. So is, and it's essential that it happens correctly. So we're beginning to have conversations with people who understand that they're, they've literally spent millions and millions of dollars developing products. How do they apply it? They certainly can't apply it using the old boom sprays where 98% ends up in the wrong place. So BBT is going to be in a highly uh, desirable position of being one of the highly targeted and a natural, 100% natural and organic application process. So I think we have a very, very bright future just based upon our application process. But if you tie that into our ability to uh, deliver our own extremely good beneficial microbe, uh, which actually affects most crops in an extremely beneficial way, not only does it give high yield increases, but also controls uh, ubiquitous diseases like botrytis, scleritinia, monolinia, etc. We are now in a position where we have, if you like, the most enviable position of being world leaders in application, but also an extremely good biological. So I, I, I see a very, very bright future. And we're in a very unique position. It's a great time to invest in the company. Finally, speaking on your last point, what can you tell our investor audience interested in B-Vectoring Technologies stock right now? Personally, I believe that this company is a highly undervalued company. The cost to bring a new uh, pesticide or biological control to market is in literally in the millions of dollars. If, uh, if we were a large agricultural company, you would have spent 50 to $100 million to get to where we are right now. So when you have a market cap of 20 to $30 million, you can clearly see that we're, we're way undervalued. As we grow uh, and you begin to see farmers and growers accepting our product and adopting it, and you see us move into other countries like Mexico and Europe and, and Switzerland, et cetera, you will begin to see the value in this company grow substantially and rapidly. So this is a great time, this very moment, to be investing with BBT. Thank you very much, Michael, for both your answer and your insight in answering these questions. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Anytime. We've been speaking with Michael Collinson, chairman of B Vectoring Technologies. I'd like to thank him once again for joining us on Stock Talk and sharing this helpful information about BVT with our Stockhouse podcast listeners and investors. I'm Omri Wallach for Stockhouse Media, and this has been your latest Stock Talk. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder to follow us on social media at Stockhouse for the latest updates on all your favorite public companies in North America. For more in-depth coverage, industry news, and to connect with our active investor community, you can visit our website at stockhouse.com. Also, don't forget to visit our new and improved Stockhouse Deal Room on site for unique and exclusive private placement opportunities only available on stockhouse.com.